Welcome to another episode of Quarter Tones. Our special guest is Rahim Al Hajj, the virtuoso uh, oud player and composer who is um, has performed all over the world. He was born in Baghdad, uh, Iraq, and has been playing oud, uh, the grandfather of all stringed instruments, at age nine. Early on, it was evident that he was uh, that he had a remarkable talent for playing. Um, and studied under the renowned Munir Bashir, considered by many to be the greatest oud player ever, and Salim Abdul Karim at the Institute of Music in Baghdad, Iraq. Uh, Rahim has won countless awards and has traveled all over the world, playing and performing and inspiring countless people. So it is an honor to welcome you to Afrika's Quarter Tone series. Welcome. Thank you very much. Thanks for having me. So let's get started right where I left off which is your upbringing and uh, studying in Baghdad. So I'm very curious, did you come from a musical family filled with oud players and filled with <laughs> um, no, accomplished musicians? That, not really. Um, actually, my, my, I don't have um, a musical uh, family, but uh, in fact, my father fought it. Uh, tremendously just because we are Arab and we don't need you to be a musician, you need you to be a doctor, you know, <laughs> engineer and, and so forth. But um, but weirdly enough, um, my father, he had the most beautiful hunting voice I've ever heard in my life. And he, he sang actually not to, to, to enjoy, he sang to cry. And I remember so vividly uh, one event um, when I still take nine or ten years old, uh, and I have oud, and and I heard him uh, singing. So I I just wanted to join him, and I went there with my oud to, to figure out which kind of maqam he he's he's singing. And my mom stopped me and said, well, "What are you doing?" And I said, "Well, I need to play with my father." And she said, "Well, no, sweetie, he's." He's not actually singing. He's a crying. So he his his tool of, of expressing himself in, in voice. So his voice is hunting. It's absolutely hunting and it's beautiful. So I do not have really a musical um, family, but like I said, this is I think explained to some degree my yeah. attention to music. I think um, yes. that's almost deeper than in a musical family because if it was coming out of him um, without, almost without permission, that means it, that music was the way he expressed himself, whether he liked it or not. Exactly. I mean, like, like I said, I, I've never, ever heard a voice hunting more than my father. It, it's just incredible. It's just really incredible. Wow. Um, and... Um, he should be Abdul Halim, <laughs> actually, if I think about this music. <laughs> um, but at wow. any rate, um, he he didn't like it. In fact, um, he's never, ever, ever been in any single concert in my life. I mean, never. I, mean, I was a kid, you know, yeah. like, he's so cute. And, you know, it was bigger than me. And I've been in newspaper, magazine, TV. And, you know, it's Arab world. When you are on TV, you are a star. You know, like, you can really star. And he's never, ever give any attention to it. And uh, my mom, actually, in that case, she supported me. In fact, I remember one time, um, he, I was in my room, and I, I was... Uh, at night, and I always I, I I developed the habit that I couldn't sleep without my instrument. So I have to have my my oud with me in the bed. I cover it, and I kiss it good night. So one time, he heard me um, talking to my oud. Hey, heavy well, I'm I'm really tired. You know, let's let's practice tomorrow. And I'm talking to my oud, and I kiss it, and I cover it in blanket. And and my father heard me, and he went to my mom, and he said. Our son is insane. So, <laughs> <laughs> do you still do that? What? No, I, I developed for eight years actually. I mean, sorry, five years uh, since I was a kid, and then I guess I, I became mature <laughs> not funny. to do it. But but I couldn't sleep without my instrument. Yeah. I mean, literally for five years, it's my my drug, and still it's my drug actually in different form of it. Um, yeah. So my mom uh, supported me in that. 
guard when I started in the beginning um, in elementary school, whereas my teacher, actually, he's, he's not even music teacher, actually, he's an Arabic teacher, but he used to bring his boot to us and he sings some song. He was a communist uh, uh, guy, you know, so he's revolutionary, yeah. he loved that. And I was just fascinated by the sound of it. Um, so one time, as you know, in Arab world, in my time also, it's very, um, is that teacher, it's like a God. You, you can't, you can't face him. You, you can't talk to him. Yeah. Like, so I was uh, courageous enough to ask him if I can just touch it. Just, just touch it. Who is this? So was this uh, uh, my teacher. Me? No, 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 no. This is like uh, in the very beginning is that okay. when I started the night, when I was nine years old. So I touched the instrument and, and I was like, it's kind of electricity came in my body. Like I so remember the film so vivid. I couldn't sleep that night. Like so beautiful. It's like smooth wood. And I never saw wood. I mean, I saw it in TV, but never touched it. And two days later, um, I was so excited and I said, oh, wow, so I can ask him again. So I was, I so asked him, can I just touch it again? Because it's so beautiful. Yeah. And he said, oh, wow, you want to play it? Have it. He said, be careful. He, he, the Udi was bigger than me. It was like, like Udi style, like yeah. really big one. And, and I imitated him, like, and I put my right hand in the, the string and then I put my left hand in the, in the zenith and um, neck and I strummed something. I, I was yeah, curious, I actually. Good kid you know but he freaked out he said, oh whoa so oh. he said you are yeah sorry yeah i want to talk a little bit i'm going to cut you off just because i want to talk about um what was it like in iraq uh as a kid um once you started actually playing was there a culture of music maybe outside your household like when you decided to study at the institute of music were your friends or classmates in, did they, they understand it? Was there a culture of music? To, to some degree, yes. They are actually sometimes, I mean, privately, I I kind of admit it out loud. I'm, 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 I regret it to be a musician <laughs> just because it's prevent, prevented me from being a kid. You know, being a kid. And uh, I was- You were practicing find, all the time? Correct. So, yeah. you know, I mean, like I was in my room and I, I looked at the street and they play soccer outside and they having fun and just, just, just kid, you know? So, yeah. um, and I look at them crying, but I have to practice, you know, but, and then I get my moment in the Thursday, you know, when they sort of, you know, and I, I have it in the oud and I get my moment, but yeah. this is not, wasn't enough for a child to, to, to live his 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 childhood. I mean, it, it was it, it was very it's excruciating to be honest uh, at yeah. that time because and I always said like, why I'm regretted because it prevented me from having childhood. And my my teacher was like, okay, um, I have to be careful with my hand. I didn't know how to bike, for example. My wife taught me how to bike here in Nice. <laughs> so I was wow. afraid of it. Yeah. So I have to be careful with my hand, and I was like, like, like always cautious about that. So it, that's it put a lot of heavy weight on on, yeah. on that. Like, what do you yeah. what do you remember about your days studying with uh, Munir Bashir? Yes. Yeah, so so that's when I started the beginning. Like I said, in the when I was nine, and then by thirteen or fourteen, I I went and then to do the the. Um, the competition, which is we call like an like audition, you have to go to to, to the conservatory because Baghdad Conservatory is the most uh, important conservatory in Arab world. Um, this is like the for people who know about the states. This is like the Juilliard of the Arab world. Correct, in the Oud, exactly. So there's there's a, um, a committee was uh, Munir Bashir was the same Abdul Karim as Ali Imam. I mean the gigantic. The player in the in the world at that time, you know. So I went and audition, and and he said play. Uh, uh, <laughs> it's really weird. And I played a little bit, and, and he stopped me, and he said, "Play something else." So they need to, it to me to see where that. So when I played, I played one of my composition, and and he said, "Okay, then play something." I played another of my composition, and he said, "Is that yours?" I said, "Yes." Yeah. He said, can you play something traditional? I said, no, I, I play just my comedy. 
<laughs> it was so crazy snap what was so, it what was his reaction he was like what what do you mean you're like and then i can of course but i said i i'm i'd love to 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 play my own composition for you to see that um and then uh, i mean eventually i played some tradition in one piece and, and i was but consciously i wanted them to recognize my composition more than just for two hours of the plane i mean i could play plain oud as a plain oud i mean when you go to the conservatory they don't teach you how to play the oud you already play the oud i mean you study music and that's when i studied when you were for six years and um the most important lesson i've ever learned actually when i was in conservatory is that i remember I was fascinated by his brother, Jamil Bashir, which is he's the most genius Oud player in the world. <laughs> like he's, he's incredible. Uh, actually, he died in Beirut, by the way. He's, he's, he's a grave in Beirut. In, oh, in, in wow. Jonah. Yeah. And I used to go there. And when I'm in Beirut, um, I mean, in Lebanon, uh, in Joanna. Yeah. And uh, his wife... He was Lebanese at that time, and his second wife. Anyway, uh, I, I used to go there and, and bring my oud and, and play in his grave, or sometimes not, and just go there. Wow. Because I was fascinated by Jimmy Bashir. I, mean, like, I look like him exactly. It, it became like I look like Jimmy Bashir. So him, anyway. you're like your father. You cry, you cry uh, using yeah. music as well. Yeah, yeah. I mean, like, if you think about my composition or even all this record I did. In fact, uh, it was funny because last well, last month I had a concert with a string quintet and um, we were finished and I was signed CDs. And so this woman came, she said, which uh, CDs do you recommend to, to buy? I said, well, this letter is from Iraq. I said, no, Jesus, it's too sad. <laughs> it's too sad. Music. Yeah. Yeah, so anyway, um, and when I learned from Munir Bashir, and I was just imitating Jamil Bashir, like, I want to be like him. So one time he was here, and he said, come to my office, and I went to him, and he said, Rahim, you play beautiful, and you want to be like Jamil Bashir, and you will never be. <laughs> and he said, because as even you played it better than Jamil, nobody will hear you as a as Rahim Nahaz. They hear you, you played it less quality of Munir, mm. of Jamil Bashir. Yeah. And he said, find your voice. You need to find your own voice. Okay, oh, so I have God. a question about this because it's sure. really interesting. Um, there's like a pedagogical question that's interesting because you came into the Institute knowing your voice. Correct. Right? You sat down, you said, I just want to play my stuff. You, Correct. You fully had your own voice and through the process of becoming excellent technically you lost your voice correct because it, i was fascinated by by jamil yes go ahead sorry no 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 that's i, I want to understand um if that was a common experience or that's something that just happened to you i think it's common experience because you as far as you you go old i mean you you practice and you know you have your voice but not really complete uh, uh, uh developed enough to see rahim al it, yeah. You are there, but not really there. So when I gone, then I heard. I mean, I went to the to the recording or or uh, cassette at that time, right? And then uh, some sheet music of Jimmy is like, wow, this is this is incredible. This is this is this is unbelievable, inconceivable to me. It's like how yeah. how technical, how how deep, and how um, important this com composer is. So I I just want to be like him. It's like oh, I need to imitate him, like all that. That time, actually, I didn't lose my voice completely, but I was intimidated by this guy. I mean, yeah. like, he's, he's incredible. So, and then when Munir Bashir told me that story, and I said, whoa, wow, that's absolutely true. I have to, vi to find my own voice to, yep. be, to be, and that's what the really great advance of the Iraqi called the Iraqi School of Oud. You know, there's a, there's a three school of Oud in the world. Uh, there is Iraqi Oud school of Oud, and there is Turkish school of Oud, and there is Oriental, I call it, school of Oud, which is, you know, you go to Egypt, Lebanon, Syria, they play the same. You know, they play the same Maqam Ras, they play the same yeah. Maqam Hijaz. 
Um, <clears throat> and they're the same Takasim, whatever you are, Lebanon, Syria. But when you go to Iraq, that's a different story. I mean, when you yeah. go to Turkey, that's a different story. And we are uh, phenomenal, to be honest. If you think of, of the, the generation uh, started in the Oud, uh, from Sheikh Mohideen Haider, who's the teacher of Munir Bashir and Jamil Bashir and Salman Shukr. That's was the three uh, most uh, permanent um, composer and, 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 and then carried that um, several um, phenomenal uh, 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 play, like Ali Imam, Salman Abdel Kareem, which is that I'm with too. Uh, so every single Oud player and, and or composer to something. Some of them just Oud players, so not the composer. Yeah. They have their own voice. I mean, there is no. You, you can tell. Oh, oh, this is this is this is Nasir Shamma. Oh, this is Salim Abdul Karim, and this is Rahim Al Had, and and this is um, uh, uh, Samuel Asim. And all the generation we have, they have their own voice. Yeah, they, we're not copying any other one else. And that's phenomenon because if you go to Egypt, for example, you, you find all the Udu players, they play the same. I mean, the same technique, the same kind of environment, the same Takasim and the same song, except Iraq. And that's absolutely fascinating to find voice, it stands itself. Yeah. And, and, and it, has, it has their own color, it has own vision, it has own, own interpretation and the sound. I mean, Maqam is Maqam, right? I mean, like, Oud is the Oud. It's like well, it's funny because same... in, in Iraq, uh, and correct me if I'm wrong, obviously, you're an expert in this. The When somebody says Maqam in Iraq, it's they're not only talking about the modes. They're, it's, an, it's a specific art form. It's a specific uh, um, form. Um, is that right? Absolutely, absolutely. I mean, we share the Maqams <coughs> in the Middle East and Arab world. Excuse <coughs> me, but... At the same time, we have the call of Iraqi Makams, which yeah. is that just the Iraqi is they not shared by Egypt, Syria, Lebanon, and and, and the uh, Maghreb and all the Arab world, and even Gulf to some degrees. Um, I mean, even even to the to Latin degrees is the Middle East. I'm talking about the Middle East. You're talking about Turkey and Iran and and, yeah. and all that. Uh, I mean, they they use the route. Yeah, of course. So so the Iraqi Makam, yes, we do have their specific. Like Maqam Lami, um, uh, uh, there's a lot of Maqamat that that included in Iraq, and bl- yeah. plus, of course, rhythm too. Uh, okay, and that sorry, that no, will no, make ahead, it please. that will make it more uh, more unique and more specific. So if you if you call okay, this is Georgina um, rhythm, for example, Georgina nobody uses it in any in any Arab world or Middle East. This is Iraq. I mean, pure Iraq. Uh, Maqam Lam is an Maqamat Kthira. Well, in that regard, um, we, of course, when we studied for six years in the conservatory, we studied the, our tradition too. It's yeah. not just like, oh, just study that, and then for two years, and then for two years, you will be a performer or a composer. Yeah. yeah okay, so, so it's just like it's structured in that, in that thing. And, and like I said, again, the the uh, I mean, there's a lot of uh, musician who graduated from conservatory, but they do not have their voice. I mean, they are technically beautiful player. I mean, they are yeah. not really um, they are not less than me, but they do not have their own voice. I mean, they, they trapped. It's, it's yeah. like there's talent, I guess I can call it, or I call it lothe. I don't know what they call it in English. To be honest, <laughs> so I, this is the for me the way I think about this is. It's the difference between a performer and an artist. Correct. That's uh, that's exactly what I'm talking about. Yeah. It's like you, you, you know. In fact, yesterday we were talking about it with with a friend from New York. He came here. Um, he's uh, uh, and his wife also in uh, chamber music, uh, America. And I told him exactly what you said right now. It's like it, it, you can be great a player, but you are not an artist. Yeah, and, and, and one isn't yeah. necessarily better than the other. In, uh, no, in some cases, uh, in some cases, you want thirty performers. You don't want thirty artists. You want thirty performers. Um, right. So let's Second actually orchestra. exactly. So <laughs> let's let's jump into this. Let's um, uh, go to the first interlude. 
letter five going home. So before we play this, um, help me set the scene. Who are we listening to right now? Who are we about to listen to? And um, what part of what project was this? Oh, yeah, this is uh, it's called Letters from Iraq. Uh, the project I've done when I went back to Baghdad, uh, my last visit, and I collected these letters, actual letters, actually, uh, by Iraqi uh, women and children to the United States during the invasion, during the uh, sectarian violence, and they talk about their stories. And I was fascinated. I said, whoa, 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 what's going on? It's like, in fact, by accident, I mean, in fact, this is my nephew who fought, who, who, who told me, I'm why I wrote the letters to to the United States. I said, what do you mean? <laughs> in English or Arabic? And he said, yeah, yeah. So he went there and he brought his notebook and he wrote me. I mean, that I read his, his, his letters. Wow. I was in tears. I was in tears. So he told about his, his experience when he's, he's, a, he's a disabled uh, teenager, um, kid that time, actually, um, when the explosion happened. So and then when I saw it, I was like, is that anybody else wrote that? He said, oh, yeah, yeah, my, my friend uh, went to another uh, you know, area. So we went there, he's a friend, and I saw another letter. And um, so I started to collect them. And then I said, wow, I find myself obligated to translate them to music, Into not music. just the English. Correct. So, uh, and this uh, with the Smithsonian, uh, I mean, you, you know, I, I think you know who is Smithsonian, um, yeah. uh, uh, that it's very important. They took this uh, record, but most of my records actually with the Smithsonian. So this is, Incredible. like I said, um, it's four oud and string quintet blast percussion. And okay. uh, yeah, so let's we listen to a little that. bit and then we'll come yeah. back. So this is sure. um, for a string quartet plus percussion. Um, if you can just comment in the box, if you can hear it in the chat box, that would be great for those who are on the call.
gonna stop here for a second. I'm gonna yeah. turn this down just for a second. Um, how much of this is being improvised? Um, just in the in the section, this one we hear right now. I mean, this is, is your solo. This is your solo. Correct. This is the solo. When I basically explaining my feeling, not this guy who is going back home. Yeah. and how he missed that so in the beginning like i said so there is improvisation just in the section of the solo oud doing it and then we'll start again to to the end of the uh, piece basically too and so when you finish for example you can hear it um so i go back to yeah. the to the string and then here we go and then we start uh the, the piece the, so you know, bum, be pop, be pop, da, da. So for these, I'm just going to turn this down again. Let me ask you a question. When you're hearing sure. these, when you're writing these, how do you start? Do you start with a melody or do you start with a, the percuss percussion in mind? How do you start writing these? Oh, well, it's all, all every time is different, different process. Uh, first, I have, I need some material to work on what I am working on I mean which kind of story I need yeah to what's the story and when I have the story exactly what the story about that when I have the story and then I settle the makam for it I mean this is how it works for example this one if you think there's a lot of quarter tone right because it has has to do with 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 home so I go all the quarter tone in it and that's with with the with the quintet that's middle you know classical musician it's too hard for them to to grab that quarter tone and uh so i i put myself explain myself i mean i mean the, the letters uh within the environment of western classical music so like yeah. it's basically i need story first then i settle the makam and then after the settlement makam i have to settle the mood I mean, what I need to talk about. So, for example, this is the exorbitant, like, oh, I'm going home. So it's too hard. So there's 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 excitement, there's there's a, a, a yearning for it. At the same time, it has dancing uh, uh, environment to it. Yeah. So that's how the. It's hard amazing. to hear myself, actually. <laughs> it's amazing. I mean, it's really, it's, it's really like incredible to listen to. It's energetic. It's emotional. Um, Correct. And it's a, it's really a beautiful piece. And that's, I mean, these uh, uh, um, project itself, um, like I said, it's very emotional. It's very real. And uh, and in, in fact, in this project, when I started to compose it, I put my my ego aside actually <laughs> which is which is Very usually hard. it is hard to put your ego aside and as a, as a virtuosic or as a composer you need your Odin always in the front but this is not the case in this in this project itself because i wanted the story to be front i need people to reach these voices of these women and children of iraq who are struggling too much and they have the humongous pain. I need the American, I need the world to listen to them, to listen to their voice. So I put the story first and then Rahim way behind. So my ego wasn't there really. It's not the idea to impress people how virtuosic I am, how how good uh, yeah. uh, a player I am. More than, please listen to the pain here. Listen to the uh, um, to the yeah, to, to to the event itself um yeah. and that's really hard for artists to do <laughs> to put your ego aside and yeah and, and, and focus on the project itself have you ever um ha had you considered with this project even maybe briefly to put lyrics um and actually set the set the letters to uh to song as well or um uh, you knew from the very beginning you didn't want to do it i mean I wanted that at the same time I will be because what happened with this project exactly I am translating them 
and 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 I put them in the background when I when I perform them, and then so and then explain exactly what the that. So I do not want the voice, even though there is one voice uh, in the one of the letters called unspoken word. Um, and there is a beautiful uh, dear friend of mine. He's a phenomenal uh, an artist who lives in Lebanon right now. Actually, Riyad Naima is an Iraqi. He did. Um, he painted each letter too in the painting. So and then I, I project the painting in the background, in the big wow. light. Um, and then the letters, and then we play the music. I mean, of course, I've explained exactly. So the audience, they will have visual of the painting. They yeah. have explained for the letters at the same time the music. So the whole picture is kind of clear to people so they can Oh, yeah, I know that. I mean, I know this in a spoken word, for example, when this little girl who lost her mom in the souk by the car bombing that, right, and became pieces. And in her mind was to sing the lullaby, the Iraqi lullaby, because that's the only first voice she heard it, right? She thought when she sing too loud, her mom, she's going to wake up. Wow. It's incredible. So, yeah. so the voice in there for that, I put the violin when he really high, really high, just crying, just, just, just really crying. I'm like, yeah. I, so that's what I'm saying is like I, I was very faithful and loyal to the letters itself. It's, it, it's not, it's not, it has nothing to do with Rahim al Hajj, it has nothing to do with his ego and oh, yeah, I can, I could do a lot of things, you know. It's almost, be, it's almost, uh, like as if you're choreographing to the to this the song it's absolutely. almost like it's cinematic almost absolutely absolutely and that's what happened in fact there is an uh, uh, argentinian uh, filmmaker uh he took uh what is this spoken word and he he made a beautiful 10 minute a movie uh about an spoken word I mean like two Actually, there is a woman, she has a veil, right, and Muslim, and the guy, he went to the elevator, and then he's a gringo, right, <laughs> and they stuck in the, in the, in the elevator, mm. and the elevator is, is broken, and he was furious and, and, and uh, afraid of this, you know, Muslim woman. And and he was just trying to get out of the elevator, and and he broke his hand. I mean, like he, he not broken, but um, he he injured his hand because he knocked on that on this glass. So what she did, she take her veil, and she rubbed his hand in it. Wow! So he took and there's no word in this movie. Wow. This is unspoken word. So. Um, so it's an inspiration for people to do this um, kind of, sometimes music, not sometimes, most of the time when we need to be faithful to the music is not just entertaining. It's about giving you a chance to think. It's to give you a chance to reflect. And he said, why this maqam is more, why was that? So yes, exactly. So it's been inspired and this project, you know, I, I played it around the world actually. Um, from Europe to Central Asia. And in fact, yeah. I'm going next week to um, a long tour. To, I'm, I'm going to I'm gonna, um, uh, premiere it with the string orchestra, which is that what wrote for actually in at the Sydney Opera House, which is three shows we have in there. So it's, it's really, uh, it's an honor thing to do that. I'm an yeah. honor I did this project, yeah. Let's move on to the next project, uh, which is Hilim. So tell us a little bit about Hilim. Yeah, this is a piece, a solo piece I wrote for the Iraqi children. In fact, I remember during the sanction, as you know, the most crucial and humane things happen to humanity when you do a sanction against them. And there's 13 years of sanction against Iraq, and Iraq it becomes really dark ages and we lost two million children as a consequence of sanction this was the most uh, unhumane like i said it's, it's incredible 
So I remember one time I called my nephews and nieces and I said, well, what, what are you dreaming right now? They said, well, you know, just have clean water and electricity and, and go to school and be safe. I mean, that's all their dream. They, they didn't tell me, oh, I want to be, become a doctor, you know, like, oh, I'm going to do this. I'm going to travel or I'm going to accomplish that. No, that's all they wanted is to be a normal, to go to school. To live. And, and and to live basically so and that's that's the basic things of the humanity when the pressure is too high we go to the to the basic right and like it, it, travel has become a, a, a it's like a privilege it's, no i need food and, and, and i need to be safe i need to live so um and i'm i'm really i'm still big advocate for for against sanction around the world i mean not just iraq i mean every sanction i mean i think about sanction against syria and, and, and iran and, and north korea and, and so forth and so unfortunately the government is not going to suffer the people is going to suffer from sanction yeah, and like absolutely. i said iraq uh, iraq paid a humongous price for for sanction. So well, this is um, I- I- Iraqis. Iraqis paid the price. Of course, the Iraqi people. I mean, that's yeah, not people. Saddam. 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 That time he had a uh, gold I and mean, toilet yeah. gold. You know, he's not. The, that's what I'm trying to tell people: yeah. don't do it because it's not going to hit the the regime. It's going to hit the the people, and and yeah. that's what what they suffer for. So this piece is like kind of explaining or hoping for the dream of the children to have real life instead of just surviving. Well, let's listen to Helen um, and uh, we'll talk about it. Let's uh, start. Let me back up. And for those listening, this is all can be found on YouTube. So gotcha.
this is absolutely stunning. Um, the first question is when that final, that theme that we just heard that has the repeating bass note and has a sort of ascending, uh, ascending and descending figure. For me, the first thing I hear, it sounds similar to my untrained ear. It sounds similar to a lot of the music out of like Andalusia and sort of this like flamenco thing. Um, am I wrong to hear that? And is it a two way sort of street in terms of who's influencing who? Yes, uh, well, of course, it's, when you hear that, because it's not Risha, I'm doing this kind of uh, uh, melody and, and harmonic in it. So I'm yeah. using that, you hear the guitar in it. Yeah. So that's always our mind we goes to the Andalusia, to the guitar, basically. Yeah. And, and if you think of that, of course, I do it intentionally because I need to settle the, 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 the mode. I mean, what I'm talking about. Yeah. So, so it's, it's introduction for that. I don't use the risha. I'm using just my finger. Yeah. And that's what they call a Phrygian mode in in in, in flamenco world, which is makam uh, uh, Kurd and makam uh, Hejaz. Yeah. Um, yes, absolutely. You are right. <laughs> you can take you to this to this area of 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 Andalusia, but that's intentionally because I need I need, like I said, to settle that first the, the introduction and then the piece was started in that regard so you have it as, as you hear it we have here it in the background um, let's, let, let me turn it up a little bit so we can hear a little bit of it then we'll come back to it yeah For example, if you think about the music I'm talking, and there is, there is, there is, you know, like 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 a, a, a rhythm always there, but within makam, but I am different makam Kurt, and I am I'm and I'm playing makam bayat inside yeah. the chord tone inside the the uh, things in it, um, and the only things I'm like. Uh, <laughs> Nasir Shemma, he said, uh, Rahim, he did something revolutionary in, in, in the music. Nobody in history <laughs> of Arabic music started with maqam and ended with maqam. I mean, ended the piece with different maqam completely. Yeah. And that's usually we don't do that. I mean, you start with maqam, you ended with the same maqam. I mean, that's, yeah. that's basically it. And, and this one piece, for example, if you think about it, the end of the piece, I still repeating the theme over and over and talking, right? Yeah. But in the end of the piece, I ended completely different makam in it. Means that you are waking up. You, you are yeah. waking up from that from that dream itself. So um yeah, it's a very emotional piece also. And at the same time, of course it's sad. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so of course it's sad. Um Do you and, hear um, uh, at the beginning of this conversation, we were talking about finding your own voice. Um, but, you know, um, most musicians and most artists are referencing people always. Referencing the, the music that they love and their their mentors. Um, and somehow the, the best artists are able to integrate and synthesize all of their influences and they make something new. Do you hear Jamil Bashir and Munir Bashir in your work? Like oh. you're listening to this now. Are you saying, oh, I, st <laughs> I stole that that one from him and yeah, oh, but, that one is... Yeah. <laughs> you put me in a spot. Actually, <laughs> yeah. Um, it's exactly for what I did right now. This. Um, Munir, uh, uh, um, Jamil Bashir is always in me. I mean, I, <laughs> yeah. I cannot escape it. Um, now with the jump here and there sometimes, uh, but most of the time, actually, 
Um, my focus in the music, I always, I don't really care about about a lot of note. I, I care about the note, how much it's effective. I call it the activating of the note. If the notes, it's like the do, you just want do, but you yeah. need to make this do meaningful. If it's not meaningful, it's a, it just sound. It just, just it's not really it's not important. We need to make this do just one note to give an idea for me or to any listener. Oh, what he's trying to do that here, for example. So I activate notes. Yes, of course. Like I said, you put me this, but. Uh, Jamil Bashir is oh, <laughs> Jamil Bashir is always jumping inside of me. It's like unconsciously, by the way. It's yeah, really unconsciously. <laughs> and um, and I'm, I'm an honored to to be, even though uh, you know, critique of Arabic music and they put that kind of uh, heavy weight of Rahim Al Hajj is uh, is another of Jamil Bashir or something like that. It hurt my ego. It's like, whoa, wait a minute. No, 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 no. I'm Rahim Al Hajj. And Jamil Bashir is like, <laughs> he's the most incredible yeah. person. But yes, uh, I think it happened unconsciously. Yeah. And we cannot, we cannot escape it. Okay. Let's um, jump into the last one, which is a Seattle symphony. Um, do you have anything we should know before we listen to this one? Yeah. For example, this one is, the, it's, it's called the, last time we fly in birds this one is a letter that because i told you the project is for oud and string orchestra it's not just string or yeah. and this one a letter is written by uh, a teenager who raised in hammam in his uh, in his roof uh, and then he was in the school and came back and there's a car bomb and de- demolished his house and the the birds fly and there's no house. And he, when he came back, he saw his 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 birds, al uh, hamam, uh, whirling around his house, but they cannot find their their place to set in. So they just whirling and whirling and flying and flying around the area without settling. Yeah. And he was in pain. He needs them to sit. He, he, he wasn't from just like crying about his home is demolished completely and his family whatever but he was he was thinking about this bird when they gonna settle when they gonna just sit again i mean like they yeah. cannot because they need they need their own home so it's it, yeah it's, yeah so let's let's listen incredible. to this one um and then we'll have time for the quick q a after this
Nahim, because we only have a few minutes left, I want to ask you a few questions about this. Um, of course. The first is, how does it feel to listen to this stuff for you? Uh, it's so emotional. I mean, I'm, I hate to hear myself, actually, to be honest. I mean, I, I never heard myself. I hear myself once when I finish the record. Um, yeah. So, but this one specifically, to be honest, is so attached to it. I mean, the project itself. Um, and I, I cry. I cry when I hear this music. I mean, like, you, you know, Seattle Symphony Orchestra is one of the best symphony orchestras in the, in the world and in the United States. And, and I was um, pleased and I was, um, oh, okay, I, I have to tell you this. We have a few minutes, but I know, yeah. for yeah, example, please. it's so, it's beautiful. So when there is one note, there is one note, and it's like, it's on the cello. And I've been telling people, I make jokes. I said, if you hit the note, I will give you $200 extra. So I was here. And then there's one moment I need the, and I was playing and I hear the note I wanted to hear it from. And I was, I was astonished. I was like, wow, he get it. So I went to the conductor and he said, no, I know because he's a Turkish guy. <laughs> the cellist, he and he came. I came to him and I kissed his hand and I said, "Thank you for hitting this note." Because it was said, a quarter course. tone, and he he knew he knew where it was. This guy, this guy, actually, in fact, this guy, he's a Turkish guy. He said, "No, this is my world. I know exactly what you want." Unconsciously, we didn't talk. Oh wow! And I, we didn't talk. I mean, until like I said, he finished and he hit the note. And I was just like crying, like, oh, wow. He said, yeah, I know exactly what you want in this. So he hit the note. And that's make me so happy. Somebody understood what I'm talking about. <laughs> so it, it was a beautiful moment in this, uh, in this concert. And uh, it Is made that, me... I wonder how it feels to perform this in, um, in places like Seattle, right? Because like just hearing you talk about this now, that sentence you just said, you said, somebody knows what I'm talking about. So it's yeah. the idea that you might be performing this stuff and sort of, um, you know, bearing your soul to a huge amphitheater filled with people. Are you, does it ever feel sort of like deafening or isolating that maybe no one actually gets it in the audience? No one Absolutely. knows the difference between this note and that note. I'm the only exactly. one who hears it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And that's so rewarding to me. And it's scary at the same time because yeah. you're playing, like, for example, this one, there's 4,500 4, people in this auditorium. Yeah. You know, if I reached one person in this 4,000, I am I'm happy. If one person who understood the pain and the suffer of the Iraqi children and women. One person, I am happy. I don't need to change the world, but I need to change individual people. And that's why I'm excited. I'm gonna play it in the most prestigious hall in the world with uh, um, Sydney Opera House, with the full uh, uh, sitting orchestra. Amazing. So, um, and I, I hope I'm going to reach more people too. And people, they think about our world. We are not just war and destruction. And no, we have beauty we need to offer to the world. And we have, we have art, beautiful art to offer to this world. Please listen to us and, and respect us as an individual, a human being. We have something to say to this world. Yeah. And we deserve as a human being to be heard. Beautiful. Well, I'm going to be listening to your music all week. Um, and I really, really thank you for the music that you've created. And thank you for joining us on Africa's Quarter Tones. Um, everyone can find your music online and everywhere. This conversation will go up tomorrow on our podcast and on YouTube and on social media. Um, please, if you know people who love music and who would be moved by this type of conversation, please share it. Um, give us a subscribe and we'll see you on Wednesday. Thank you very much for having us. Really, thank you thank so you. much. It was really, really a privilege to be able to speak with you. Thanks a lot.